Hello there, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope you all are doing well so far today. I wanted to come on here and give you guys a two-article news update. I know it's been a few days since my last video. It's been about three days, I want to say. So I figured, you know what? It's about time that I got back on here and delivered another update. So I have constructed a news update of two articles. Both of them are off of endtimeheadlines.org. So without any further ado... This is your world news update for the 25th of May, 2021. Let's start here with this first article. I think it's very, very cool, very interesting. Uh, a little solar event, if you will. A super blood moon and ring of fire eclipse will appear tomorrow in the sky, and some warn that it is actually a harbinger of sorts and kind of a sample image of what we could be seeing. Uh, I read somewhere that it's only visible in locations that are past the Rocky Mountains. So it's not like everyone's going to be able to see it. Uh, for those who can't directly see it, you know, they have live streams and stuff like that where you could always, you know, look at video footage of it. But uh, yeah, that's what I was reading. It's somewhere past the Rocky Mountains is where you'll be able to actually see it in person. Uh, so we have a lunar eclipse or blood moon, and it's going to be visible across the world from Australia to America and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, according to ancient passages, the moon turning blood red is a heavenly sign that the end times are fast approaching, according to CBN News. One holy script says, quote, the moon will turn into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Steve Warren and Benjamin Gill from an American conservative evangelical Christian TV network wrote, quote, Jesus told his followers that we should observe the signs of the times, including the signs in the heavens. I'm not really looking at the signs of the times anymore. I'm listening for the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Quote, some preachers claim a large number of blood moon eclipses in recent years are just one of the many signs that the end of the world is drawing closer and closer and could possibly happen in the near future. But don't run to the underground bunker just yet. Scientists say that the moon's color is simply a result of it passing through Earth's shadow in space. As the planet goes beyond the typical location, as it goes behind the Earth, it turns red only as the colors with the longest wavelengths can get through the atmosphere. The reddish color copper, which is why we call it a blood moon, will last for about 15 minutes. Also this year, just two weeks after the super blood moon, some areas in Russia as well as Canada will be treated to a rare and impressive ring of fire solar eclipse that will last three minutes and 33 seconds. Three, three, three. I think that's interesting. But the doomers think that this is also a sign of the world ending and quote the book of Luke in the Bible. There will be signs of the sun, the moon, and... And the stars for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Very, very interesting. There will be a lunar eclipse visible all across Australia, all the way to America and the Pacific Ocean. Again, I was reading other articles that you know seem to give this impression that not everyone will be able to actually see it. It's only people beyond the Rocky Mountains here in the States that'll actually get you know a nice personalized view of this lunar eclipse. And then, of course, you have our Canadian and Russian brothers and sisters who will get the treat of seeing the solar eclipse, the Ring of Fire solar eclipse, which is deemed as very rare and obviously a very impressive sight. So that's what's going on there in terms of signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. Now we're going to come back down here to the surface of Earth for a moment, and that's where we will look at this second article. And it's actually of a new series of earthquakes that have struck uh, near the Congo border. And this is an update to an original article that was posted, so obviously this will include the original article as well as updated information. So new earthquakes at Congo border spark fears of a second volcanic eruption. And kind of a picture of what's going on there in the Democratic Republic of Congo. An earthquake measuring at a 5.3 magnitude rocked the borderlands between Rwanda and Congo early this morning. And that's according to the Rwandan Seismic Monitor and what they said in a statement. Raising worries about a fresh eruption following one on Saturday 
that killed at least 32 people. So very tragic natural disasters unfolding there on the ground in Congo. On Saturday, the Democratic Republic of Congo's Mount Nirigongo, I hope I pronounced that all right, which is one of the world's most active and dangerous volcanoes, erupted, sending a river of lava downhill towards Goma, which is a city of around 2 million people. So this is a very large metropolitan city on the ground in Congo. The area has experienced repeated tremors since then, obviously in the form of initial quakes and, of course, aftershocks and perhaps even earthquake precursors have been transpiring. And the lava lake in the volcano's crater appears to have refilled, raising fears of, a, you know, possibly another eruption or new fissures, you know, unfolding as a result. And that's according to the United Nations Refugee Agency and what they said in a statement. The earthquake appeared to have collapsed several buildings in Goma, according to a Reuters reporter, although it was not yet clear if there were any casualties as police had sealed off the area that was impacted. The quake struck at around 11.03 a.m. local time, originating in the Riguro sector in western Rwanda, according to the Rwanda Seismic Monitor, which is managed by the Rwanda Mines Petroleum and Gas Board. Multiple cracks in the earth have emerged in Goma in the last day, according to, again, a boots-on-the-ground Reuters reporter. Although businesses have reopened across the city and life appeared to be returning to normal for those who didn't lose their homes. About 1,000 homes were destroyed and more than 5,000 people were displaced by the eruption. And again, at least 32 have been killed as a result, according to the United Nations. That was a lot. Even though I only had two articles, it was very jam-packed for a news update in comparison to some of the normal news updates we've been having as of late. You have the super blood moon, solar eclipse going on, signs in the skies, and then you have, you know, continued tremors and volcanic eruptions going down here on the surface of Earth. Whole lot going on. Uh, a whole lot going on, and it all ultimately points to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you do not know Jesus, if you have not believed the gospel, which is how you know Jesus, by the way, I will share the gospel right now. We're going to go to our ESOR digital online Bible program. We're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. This is the gospel. This is how you are saved if you believe this in your heart. This is the good news. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That is the Gospel, man. If you believe that alone, nothing else, just believing the Gospel, you will be saved. It's, it's that simple. It is that simple. Ties in beautifully, as always, with John 3, uh, verses 16 through 18, which reads as follows, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, of God. I think that's pretty simple if you ask me. All those who believe the gospel, those who place their full faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, will have eternal everlasting life. Everlasting, last I checked, means forever. A life that can't be lost. So that effectively rules out people who say that you can lose your salvation. If salvation could be lost, it wouldn't be eternal, would it? All right, so don't listen to the people who say that you could lose your salvation or you have to do uh, a 12-step process in order to get saved. Salvation's not a process. It is a one-time, instantaneous event that happens at the moment of belief. It is that simple. Don't listen to those who try to overcomplicate the most simple things. It is ridiculous. Seriously. John 3.36 is another passage I want to read. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That is present tense. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The wrath of God is referring to the entire seven-year tribulation period which is soon to come upon the earth once us believers are taken out of here first. You don't want to be here for that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You will be delivered from the wrath to come. 
right? It's not your water baptism that'll save you, right? If you're watching this as a non-believer, it's not your water baptism. It's not your ability to do good works or good deeds. It's not your ability to follow the commandments or obey the law. Obeying Jesus will not save you. Believing in Jesus alone is what will save you. All right, Ephesians is very clear on this. Ephesians 2, uh, verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's very, very clear. Grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, which God offers to us as the free gift of salvation, right? It's God's unmerited favor. And we accept and receive that free gift by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. It's not of ourselves so that no man may boast. It is the free gift of God. It would not be a gift if we had to work for it. It would not be a free gift if we had to worry about maintaining it 24-7. All right, so don't listen to those people. Listen to the truth of the scriptures, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, and that once we are saved, we are always saved, period. Simple as that. All right, so that's where I want to leave you guys for today's video. That will conclude, obviously, the two-article update and the gospel presentation. I will see you all in the next video, whenever it is, should the Lord Terry is coming. Otherwise, God bless.